Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to building your own AVR slash Arduino Internet of Things board. So this is going to be a five part series where we go from our design to our prototyping to PCB layout all the way to testing our final design. And what will our final design be? It'll be a microcontroller development board based off of Arduino with wireless capability built on or built in, I should say. I'm really excited about this project. This has been something I wanted to do for a while. So let's get started. So what is the motivation behind this? Well, it's something I've been wanting to do for a while and all my projects today have wireless communication on them in some form or another or all the projects I have in my head as well. So I wanted to create a development board that suits that need. So the whole point of this is to be go after the Internet of Things type applications, you know, home automation, wireless sensor, wireless control of anything. Besides just having the microcontroller and the wireless capabilities, I want the final board to be very flexible and prototyping friendly. And so we're going to be building that with that in mind, flexibility and prototyping. I don't want to have to bring in a whole bunch of different breadboards for my uh, little Internet of Things designs. I want to be able to do it all on my development board, hopefully. For this tutorial or for this video series, we'll be learning together. So I, I haven't done this project yet. I, I'm going to start the steps. I'm going to do the steps as I go through the video. So I will warn you, I may make a change from one point to the next based on what I've learned from one video to the next. So just keep that in mind. We'll be learning together. This project will be being done in, in real time. Here's the breakdown. Now this could change once again, depending on how things go. This first part will have the design and concept and initial parts. We'll get our parts. We'll do our testing and our prototyping. We'll then do our PCB schematic layout where we'll probably add some more connectors and switches and so on and so forth. We'll do our PCB board layout. Now for the PCB part, I'm going to be using the Eagle software, which is free to download for hobbyists. And then in part five, we'll get our board, we'll test it, and we'll make sure everything works. And of course, between port part four and five, there could be a couple iterations. And that's, that's just real life. So let's look at some of the main supporting cast that's going to be on our Internet of Things Arduino development board. Well, we're going to be using the Atmega 328P, uh, which is the chip that's on the Arduino Uno. So everybody should know it well if you're, if you're in the Arduino world. We'll be using a 16 megahertz clock, just like the Uno. What's different from the Uno is we're going to power it with 3.3 volts. So we're going to use a 3.3 volt level. So We'll use that for our power and we'll use that for all our digital communication and, and, and things like that. For the wireless communication, I'm going to use Bluetooth Low Energy. I'm going to use a, uh, the BLE Micro from DF Robot. The re reason I chose this one is it's fairly low cost, it's very small, and it uses serial communication. I'll talk more about this board a little bit later. There's a lot of other things we could put instead, but you know that's that can be a future board. For our power, we're going to use a voltage regulator, the LM317, which is a well-known voltage regulator. It's been out there for a while. A lot of different companies make it. I like it because it's flexible, and that's one of the goals of our design, flexibility. So it's adjustable. The input voltage can be everywhere from 4.2 volts to 40 volts, and the output can be 1.2 volts to 37 volts. And here's a closer look at the LM317. The whole idea is these resistor values based on the adjustable current determine what the output voltage is. So we have, you can see the capacitors there and, and one of the capacitors C out or CO is basically an energy reservoir. And then uh, C in or, or CI is basically a filter. But the resistors are gonna control the output based on that formula I have on the bottom of the picture. Now. For this formula, we can sort of get rid of the I adjust R2 uh, component of the formula because I adjust is so small. So if we just use the rest of the formula, we set VO to what we want it to be and we solve for R1 and R2. And what we're going to do is we're just going to set R1 to 300 ohms and then we'll, we'll solve for R2. And so you'll get for about 3.3 volts, you'll get about 500 ohms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an adjustable potentiometer a one kilo ohm adjustable potentiometer. So it gives me the chance to, to vary the voltage going to the Arduino. Now, if you want, you could just use a fixed resistor. That's, that's no problem. Here's a look at the schematic. So I'll give you a second to drink it all in. Now notice the main supporting cast we have here. We have the uh, DF Robot uh, BLE Micro. We have the LM317 up in the top right corner, and we have our Atmega328P. 
you might ask if you're if you're not familiar with electronics you might ask well you know where do all these resistors capacitors and other parts come from or how do you know what they are well some of them are simple calculations but a lot of them you get from the Arduino data sheet or even some of them I get from the Arduino Uno schematic why because Arduinos are open source hardware so if we start off we have our FTDI input connector and so this will be where we program the Arduino from. So we're going to have a ground. We're going to tie the CTS to ground as well. We'll have a VCC input here. Uh, we'll have our transmit, our receive, and our RTS, which is basically is, goes to our reset pin. Now this is what we'll use to program our development board from the Arduino IDE, but we're going to need something to do that, and I'll talk about that later. We're not going to have the serial chip or the programming chip on board like the UNU does. Next, let me mention the LM317. So this is going to be our main power source in, except when we have the programmer hooked up. And like I said, you can have a wide input voltage, and then our output is going to be VCC, and I'll set it for about 3.3 volts. If you're not familiar with schematics, everywhere where you see the arrow in VCC, that, that's essentially the same connection. All those connections are at the same node. And then also, the same with the ground pin ground you can see it used throughout so that's something to keep in mind so it looks like the LM317 is not hooked up to anything but actually it is it's all tied to VCC it's feeding the VCC throughout the development board we have the LED and uh, just a 300 ohm resistor right on the input to just show that power is applied we have our at mega chip and I'm going to talk a little bit about the parts on here now notice I have the numbering from the data sheet Sorry, it's a little blurry, but then I also filled in the pins or labeling for the Arduino Uno. If we look at our reset pin, I, we're going to use a push button switch so we can apply the re reset using a 10 kilo ohm resistor and VCC. Basically what this does is applying a low to reset, resets it. And you can see a cap there, a 100 nanofarad cap, and that's going to come from the programmer. And so the programmer is actually isolated from a DC standpoint from the reset and our reset button. But with the cap there, it allows us to basically control the reset from that input using rising and falling edges from that input. Let's talk a little bit about the serial communications right after the reset, uh, D0 and D1. That's going to go, of course, to the FTDI input for our programming, but it's also tied to our BLE chip that's how we're going to communicate it with it there and you can see I have two one kilo ohm resistors there so what that's going to do is basically stop the communication when the program is hooked up to the Bluetooth module and just have it communicate with the Arduino now when the program is disconnected those resistors won't matter and the Arduino will communicate over serial with the uh, BLE micro okay what else the BLE micro reset is tied to the uh, Arduino or AVR we're at Mega 328P reset. We have our D2, D3. We have our VCC in to power our chip. We have a ground connection next. And then pins 9 and 10 are the input for the clock. So I'm going to use a 16 megahertz resonator. So you can use a crystal oscillator here or a resonator. Resonator is a little simpler, a little cheaper. The downside to the resonator is it's a little less accurate than a crystal oscillator. For my purposes, I don't need the timing to be, you know, nanosecond on, so or even microsecond on, to be honest. So I'm going to use a resonator. You can use a crystal oscillator if you want. Under the, the clock input, we have some more of our digital input pins. Then we have the top right of the 328P, we have our analog ADC pins. We have another ground pin. Then we have our AREF. If you ever watched my video series on... Uh, make an accurate or high resolution measurements with your ADC. This is what sets the reference for ADC, for ADC measurements, for our voltage measurements. And on the Arduino Uno, we feed this out. You can basically, and we'll feed it out on our board too, so you basically can check the analog reference. If you want more information on that, check out my video series on, on ADC measurements. We have a capacitor there just to filter out noise, so we have clean uh, input there. AVCC is basically the input for our, for our reference, for our ADC reference. So the AREF is where we can check our reference or feed in an external one. AVCC is the reference we're using. 
So we're feeding in VCC, and once again, we have a cap there to filter out noise. Then we have D13, D12, D11, D10, and D9. So that's going to be all of our pins. You can see the BLE Micro has a lot of pins. Most of those we're not going to use. Well, I shouldn't say we're not going to use them. Most of those we're not going to talk about. But what I will do is I'll probably on our development board put you know access to those pins in case you want to do more advanced features with the BLE chip. So here's my bill of materials. Now these aren't going to be all the parts we're going to need. We're going to need some more parts when we get to the development board. But these are going to be the first parts I need to do my prototyping to test out that design you just saw and make sure everything's going to work correctly and how I want it to work. And I might make changes when we do the actual prototyping and then I'm going to talk about pieces that I'll add, connectors that I'm going to add, things like that to make it more flexible and some other parts I may add for prototyping. But this is the basic core of the design that we want to test in part two. So here's my list. Everything on here was on the schematic we just saw with the exception of the of a one mega ohm resistor. So if you look at the resistor bullet, I may need this for the resonator to put in parallel with the input for the clock. I don't necessarily know if it's needed. I mean, to be honest, there's a lot of parts in here that might not be, that are not absolutely necessary, such as a lot of the capacitors. We could probably not even use any capacitors and everything would still work, but it makes the design more robust. In, in the case of ADC measurements for the filtering, it makes it less noisy and makes this more accurate ADC measurements. So you can decide if you want to make some of these parts optional. One other thing I want to mention is the BLE chip, the BLE micro, is going to be the only thing that's not through hole. So this whole design, I want to do through hole. So it's easy for you to solder and, and put parts on or take parts off. It's just easier to work with for hobbyists. The only exception will be the BLE micro. That's not going to be through hole. So just keep in mind, that's going to be a small board. And if you order just the micro, it's not very easy to prototype unless you have a PCB board that you made for it, which I'm, which I'm going to have. And I, I will actually probably link that in part two if you want to access it, but you can get other iterations of the BLE Micro that are better for prototyping if you want to do that. Also, I will mention too, you can get cheaper versions of the BLE Micro that people have made their own. Um, I saw some on the website AliExpress if you want to save even more money. For the parts, you might be saying, well, where do I get 10 kilo ohm resistors and, and what should be the specifications, so on and so forth. Well, I had a lot, some of these parts, not a lot of them. I had a couple of these parts, but most of these I ordered from uh, Newark or Element 14 or whatever it's called. It's called something else in, I think, Europe. Anyway, you can go to my blog and I'm going to have a list of the parts that I ordered. So you can see some of the part numbers for the resistors. You can see the Atmega chip I ordered and so on and so forth if you want to check that out. Finally, here's some stuff you're going to need for part two to make, take the next step. So we talked about the parts, but here's some other supporting parts that I'll be using. First of all, I need an AVR programmer because when I order the Atmega 328P, it's not going to have the Arduino bootloader on it. So I need a programming board. I have the uh, AVR pocket programmer, which is really easy to use. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, if you want, you can order the Atmega 328P chip with the bootloader on it. What is it? Adafruit sells that. Now you're going to pay more for it. It's going to be like six bucks versus like three fifty. But if you don't, if you order it without the bootloader, you're going to need some type of programmer to put the Arduino bootloader on it, so you can use it like an Arduino chip from the uh, Arduino IDE. Also, we need an FTDI cable or board because we're not building that onto our development board. I'm going to use the FTDI basic board, which I use with the uh, with the Pro Mini. Uh, to program the Pro Mini. So that's what I'm going to use. Both of these boards, by the way, that I showed, I got at SparkFun. So you can get them there. Or you can use an equivalent. You don't have to use these. I just want to point out what I'll be using. Okay, well, that's it for part one. Part one of building your own AVR Arduino Internet of Things board. I'm real excited about this project. I'm really excited for part two. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done that. If you want to access the schematic that I showed and the example parts list, once again, not all the parts will be on there, but just some example ones, you can go to my blog. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. And also, if you think I got anything wrong on this design, write it in the comments so we can know for part two and be ready. All right, I'll see you at part two. Thank you for watching.